Thank well, you. welcome to all of you and to those who are dribbling down the hallway and will be here soon. Um, whatever makes you unique and special, we welcome you to this place and uh, to our communion. And the communion table is open to all. I should tell you who I am, by the way, if you're wondering. My name is Terry Shellington. I'm a retired minister in the congregation. And, and um, gee, about two weeks ago, I said to Trevor as he was working through the, the drama with his uh, uncle, Richard, that if there's anything I could do, uh, let me know and I would do it. So uh, it turns out I'm here this morning and he has a needed Sunday off and I'm glad to give him that gift. Um, so we arrive at this second Sunday of Advent. Christmas hurries at us. We scramble to be ready. The scriptures this day invite us to come home, to receive afresh the gift of faith, to find peace in our hearts and hope in our living. Let us enter into the holy with the faithful of the ages. We do the Advent candlelighting with the Villeneuve family. In the season of Advent, we wait for the coming of peace into our... Oh, hold on. <laughs> Better if I start at the beginning. In a world of war, violence, and environmental destruction, where families live in shelters and children grow up in fear. LGBTQ folks are persecuted. In First Nations, people look for reconciliation. Political discourse is acrimonious. Where peace seems to be so far away, we call upon you, God of peace, to come and help us co-create justice and peace. In this season of Advent, we wait for the coming of peace into our world. We await the birth of Emmanuel, God with us and within us, who comes into our lives in a new way. So let us allow Christ to be born in our awareness and actions this Advent season. So we see that we are truly one and follow the signs of peace being birthed by the Spirit of God and act upon them this season of new birth. Let us pray together. Let us pray. We would gather, O inviting God, and be at peace in your presence. Come, Holy Spirit, give us calm where the voices of our time shout. Come, simplify our spirits where our lives become complicated and far too busy. Come, O God of new life, stir us where we have fallen asleep. Refresh our vision where we grow old, settled, and certain we know all about your coming. We wait for your healing and enlivening, for we would meet you anew in Jesus the Christ. Amen. And I, as we prepare for communion, I invite you to, to um, enjoy the words, savor the words of the prophet Isaiah, who uh, is part of our prayer. So uh, you can take the bold print. Let us pray. With the faithful of the ages, we come to the table of the Christ. We too hear the prophet We pray as ones who have traveled and witnessed the wilderness of our time. We pray for the healing of war and violence, hungry children and broken relationships, the anger one with another. And we hear the prophet inviting. So we come for a blessing amid our fear. With the exiles of long ago, we fear for our future. We come to this table touched by anxiety, by the threat and danger of our globe. We ask for courage to live boldly. We hear the hope of the prophet. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then 
and the lame shall leap like a deer. We pray for the healing of our own blindness. We miss, for we miss the miracles of new life, walk by the beauty of love, and the signs of your spirit stirring among us. We hear the wild vision of the prophet. We pray for the healing of our own thirst, our low expectation and loss of vision, our emptiness, uh, uh, empty busyness and jammed lives. Come, O God of life, and feed us at this table. Give us words of faith to speak and prayers of thanksgiving to offer. We hear the prophet inviting us home. So, gracious God, bring us home to dine with other faithful people at your table, to walk with others who need our support, to leave anger behind, to sing songs of transformation and peace. Come, O oh God, and nourish us at this table. Amen. The first reading is from Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 to 6. In this gospel reading, John the Baptist is in prison. He sends messengers to Jesus to find out if indeed he is the Messiah, the one from God. Jesus' answer seems clear. When John, when John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or we wait for another? Jesus answered him, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. I invite you into a short time of silent meditation and then we'll close with uh, prayer. So let us be silent. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with new life. We come in our fatigue and busyness. Give us peace where our work is unfinished. Where these readings and songs are familiar to us, grant us fresh hearing and an open mind that you may speak to us afresh. Where we come in fear and anxiety, help us to grow in peace. Teach us to trust your promises that you go with us always and show us the way. Open our minds to hear, soften our spirits, that we may grow and change. Give us courage to walk the difficult path of love, that we may be persistent and centered in your love. In the name of the Christ, we pray. Amen. The second reading today is from Isaiah chapter 35, verses 1 to 10. This poetry from Isaiah was written during or after the Babylonian ex exile, that is, 1400s before Jesus. The captives long to come home to Israel. The writer offers hope to the despairing, the vision to who have lost hope. Perhaps it speaks to us too. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of fearful heart, be strong, do not fear, here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped, the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, the streams in the desert, the burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp, the grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, <clears throat> and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fool, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. 
They shall not be found there, but in the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. May the Lord bless us and help us live the truth we hear. The passage from Isaiah that you heard, uh, Lori Reed, is a rich and special passage, and I always find that uh, first song in the hymn book, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, full of rich exile images as well. I think they belong together. A highway shall be there. The unclean shall travel on it. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return. The end of Isaiah 35. This passage from Isaiah is written looking out on the vast desert between Iraq, Iran, where Babylon was located, and Jerusalem. Isaiah writes to the exiles in Babylon, assuring them they will find their way home from exile to comforts of, of Israel, finding their way across the vast, forbidding desert of that region. They are discouraged, unsure of the future. We don't know much about deserts, at least I don't, although um, uh, when, you're done, when I'm done with you, you'll have seen five different desert landscapes, so that qualifies for a little bit of information. What we do know about is finding a way home amid blizzards and winter storms. And that reminds me of a story a good friend, Stuart, told me many years ago. Stuart was a leader in the congregation back in Brandon. He taught the teen Sunday school class. He chaired the church council, served a term as chair of the Southern Manitoba Presbytery. He had no seeing eye dog because he didn't need one. He could go the several blocks between his house and his parents, in, his, his wife's in-laws, uh, quite easily, uh, down the alley, around a corner, down another alley, and so on. It was marvelous. So it surprised me one uh, day at church. He told me he had got lost the day before, that Saturday, and how scary it was for him. You see, they lived in a big crescent, and. Uh, the steward and his wife lived in the middle of the, the horseshoe. Uh, and he was out there on the Saturday doing something I, I'm not quite sure what. He might have been shoveling snow. When suddenly he realized he had no idea where he was. You see, it was amid a big dump of snow. Stuart explained to me that nothing, nothing was worse for a blind man than a foot of new snow because he could not tap his cane and locate a curb. He realized... He didn't know where the curb was, didn't know where any curb was. Panic boiled to his system. He was lost in the storm. And while that might not seem very far from home to us, uh, for Stuart, a blind man, it was terrifying. So after a while, he calmed himself down. He listened carefully to the sounds around him. He could hear a wind chime. He remembered where in that crescent the wind chime was located. He did some reckoning and figured out where his house must be located. And so he found his way home amid the storm. For us, as we read Isaiah, the desert is a metaphor, I believe, for the world we live in. Whether we have to cross a huge desert expanse or navigate a winter blizzard or just work through the blizzard of our own commitments and challenges of our lives, we long to find our way home uh, this Christmas. We urgently need to locate home in the middle of our storms. Next slide. Thank you. Consider what the prophet tells his listeners. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly. Of course, the poet exaggerates wildly, and his listeners would know it. What we are looking at is probably as lush a desert scene as you're liable to see. The desert is never going to rival your backyard garden. The blossoms, the crocus and more, are likely, likely will be subtle and hidden, invisible, unless you look carefully. One reflector about the desert and about life offers this. The desert's life is in its corners and pockets. Far away to the horizon is waste and space. Arid, close up in the crevice, is color 
and life. Arid is not dead, nor rocky, lifeless. Look closely at your desert. Look closely at your desert. The desert is a metaphor for the hard times, the dry and unexcited pathways we need to travel some days. It represents the challenges of raising children, the challenge of growing old. The desert symbolizes the stress of our lives, the shouting, the demands on our time, disappointments and fears we live with each week. We are often whiners and complainers about the landscape around us. There percolates among us a low-grade fury at politicians and leaders. Some are angry at the church. We gripe about the weather, all the snow we have to shovel. We talk about our aches and pains. We often look out on the landscape around us and lament the barren desert we see there. I hear the prophet telling us, you will have to walk through the desert to find your way to the holy, but look around you. See the crocuses blossoming in the crevices and cracks. The desert will offer, offer laughter and love to. We will see beautiful people and stumble across holy moments as we walk through the desert. Maybe you've been sharp enough to have noticed on the back of your folder the reflection, uh, which uh, reflects about the desert and its place in faith, and its place for our early Israelites. Uh, in the challenge and stress amid the desert, if you will, God will speak, will be embraced by the holy. Next slide. We wonder about climate change. We live in a climate of fear oftentimes, and uh, uh, our, our culture has many, many fears. We wonder about climate change and if the human species will be able to get this under control. We wonder what kind of world will our children and grandchildren inherit. We wonder about our leaders and if they have any vision in where they would take us. Thanks to media images, but also friends and hearsay, we worry about all kinds of ailments and diseases, from shingles to Lyme disease, from cancer to heart. Each person and each family has its fears. Aging parents, cancer creeping in, the marriages of our grandchildren. Tucked away in the secret parts of our heart, we are uneasy about what the future may bring. We all have our fears and our challenges. As we make our way through this land before us, we need to drink deeply of Isaiah 35. For as we walk with the holy, weak hands will be strengthened, feeble knees will be supported, those who quake in fear will find their backbone. As we make our way home to be fully in God's presence, we will find courage in the faith of our mothers and fathers. We will sing the songs of vision and Christmas hope that other, other generations of faith have written for us. We will gather with the faithful and find strength to live our fear, with our fears and our unfinished business. As we find our way home, we walk with the holy. We breathe in vision and breathe out despair. We breathe in laughter and beauty, breathing out anger and cynicism. We breathe in music of faith and breathe out angry shouting, discordant sounds. Next, next slide. There is more in this passage, and I, I couldn't resist showing you this scene of the desert oasis. For as we walk in the dry land, there will be water to drink, healing for our parched spirits. Next slide. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the Holy Way. The, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return. In so many ways, the hope and yearning of this season is about returning home. Some will literally get to airports or climb into cars because we like to be home for Christmas. We want to be among loved ones. And I had to restrain Daryl because he wanted to use one of the post-war songs, <laughs> um, We'll Be Home for Christmas, <laughs> because we're not the first generation to yearn for home at Christmas time. Some of us are trying to spend less, consume less packaging and plastic because we want to return home to a simpler, healthier, more peace peaceful Christmas. Many of us are touched by familiar Christmas music because it rings up images of another simpler time in our lives when life was less complicated and more peaceful. At least we imagine that that was so. 
So the prophet speaks of making a highway across the desert. Again, he speaks in flowery images. In reality, the rugged, bumpy, modest trail you see there uh, would be seen by the exiles as a wonderful highway. So we too seek a road, a holy way back in our lives and in our Christmas experience. Finding our way back to the holy has some markers that we can look for amid the wilderness. We can look for simplicity amid the abundance. Our land, our shopping centers, our homes are bulging with abundance. But we may find the holy way more in simple ways of being together. There will be beauty, extravagant and wonderful, as the poet claims. But as our reflector on the desert remarked, we may find that color and life in the crevices, away from the noise and the action. As the poet says, the lame shall leap like a deer and the eyes of the blind shall be opened. But it may not be on a TV special. It may be at a Christmas meal for those at the supervised consumption site. The highway may be a modest path of peace and gentle caring amid a world more concerned about winning and, and having the most toys. Yes, we're invited home this Christmas season. It's a pathway through a noisy, demanding world. We will find a pathway of faith uh, that the faithful and saints before us have trodden. There will be simple flowers of beauty along the way. Along this path, we'll be ca caring for the weak and needy. There will be support for the fragile and comfort for the grieving. If we seek the holy, if we pause, listen, and wait, the Spirit will give us new and spectacular gifts along the path as we find our way home this Christmas. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs>